So, bendy phones, eh? Way! Sorry, that was probably the worst introduction I've ever done, and that is a bar so low that it's practically housed in Australia, so let's start it again. This here Motorola Razr 2022 is the third Moto Razr foldable now, boasting design improvements, beefy Snapdragon 8 Gen Plus 1 performance, and boosted specs, all for a lower price that cheekily undercuts the Samsung Galaxy Flip 4 by 50 whole quid. Oh, Motorola, you beautiful mega bastards. You can grab the Motorola Razr 2022 from John Lewis and Amazon here in the UK for just 949 quid, but should you? Well, let's whip it on out of the box, take you on a full-on tour of all that sexy, bendy tech. And for more on the latest shiny shenanigans, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, first of all, i got to say, I really like this box. It's a lot more sleek and sexy than Motorola's usual efforts. But of course, I'm not here to review the box, so let's get it open. And there's the fresh new Motorola Razr 2022 tucked away inside. And what else do you get stuffed inside the box? Well, you've got yourself an adapter. I know, an actual bloody adapter. It's a 30 watt turbo power effort. You've got yourself some USB type C cable action and a dinky little package, which has got some readme information inside. Just your basic bog standard quick start guide and also a porky pin to get your SIM in there. And last but very much not least, you've also got a condom case bundled in there. It's actually a two-part affair. They're quite rigid, fnar fnar, and they just snap on there solidly. Hold it on there pretty firmly as well to just add a bit of extra protection. And that's everything you'll find stuffed inside of the Razer 2022 box. So now the fun part, let's check out the actual fun. So the design of the Motorola Razr 2022 won't shock anyone who's a fan of the original or the 5G updated model from 2020. We are very much in familiar territory here, although Motorola has refined it in a few key areas for this third edition. Fold it up and it is still beautifully dinky. You'll easily be able to slip this into any pocket, any handbag, purse, whatever. Hell, you could probably smuggle this thing into a prison in a selection of bodily orifices, if you're so inclined. A 200 grams has definitely got a bit of a heft to it. Certainly feels like a premium device. And yes, when it is folded up, it is a bit of a chunkster, but nothing too troubling. As long as you aren't wearing super skinny jeans or anything, you should be able to slip it into most pockets, no worries. And sadly, the Motor Razr 2022 is only available in this one color, which is of course black. And actually satin black, if you want to give it its full moniker. It does feel quite nice, it's a nice smooth finish to it. I do think the design just looks that little bit more polished compared with previous generations, although I really like the look of the older ones. It's kind of a shame you've got this ugly text along one of the lips right there, though it's so teeny you can barely even notice it. You've now got a bigger display up front there, but one of the key questions is how good is that flip action? Ugh. Well, it's definitely not as stiff as Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4, that's for sure. You can do it one-handed a lot more easily. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you know, halfway there. And the hinge is still fairly stiff. It's certainly stiff enough so you can prop up that top half of the screen at any sort of angle that you want to in order to, you know, do Skyping or whatever else. Now, both the front end of the Motorola Razr 2022 and that back end right there are constructed from Gorilla Glass 5, so hopefully should prove nice and scratch resistant. As for the main display, well, that's apparently Velvet AG glass. You do get a pre-installed screen protector slapped on there as well, which Motorola highly recommends not removing. And then as for the actual frame, well, that's constructed from metal, as you can tell from the occasional appearance of an antenna band. And it definitely feels wider than the Galaxy Z Flip 4, that's for sure. But it is comfortable to clutch, and I just really like the form factor. It's got a premium look and feel, so yeah, definitely a fan. Unfortunately, unlike the Galaxy Z Flip 4, the Motorola Razr 2022 isn't fully water resistant. You can't go dropping it into a sink or a bath and expecting it to survive. It's IP52 rated, so fine if you know your room's a bit dusty, you can't be bothered to clean, or it gets a bit of a splashing because you're caught out in a rainstorm. Hello UK, welcome to winter. So let's turn our attention to the actual software running on the Motorola Razr 2022. And sadly, it's Android 12, not the latest, freshest Android 13, as found on those pixels. Now, hopefully that should be coming soon. Unfortunately, the reviewer's guide for the Razr didn't mention how many updates and security updates you can expect. But as this is a premium device, you can probably expect at least a couple of years worth. And because this is a Motorola device, it's not absolutely laden with crapware either. There's a couple of bits chucked on here that I most definitely did not ask for, including good old Facebook, of course. But it is a nice clean stock version of Android slapped on here. Motorola's only real addition is the Moto app. 
Got all the usual features packed on here, uh, which we know and love. So you've got lots of gesture support, for instance. What's that? Did somebody say fast torch? <laughs> and plenty of other bits, which I'll touch on later, including the Moto Game Time. Now to unlock the Moto Razr 2022, you do actually have an edge mounted fingerprint sensor built into this very skinny wee power button here. And I was a bit skeptical considering how thin that power button is, but it works an absolute charm and it works when the phone is unfolded and also when it's folded up. So that secondary screen when the phone is hibernating just kind of acts like a, a general lock screen showing you what notifications might be waiting for you. But then unlock it with your fingerprint and suddenly you can access all of your apps, check out those notifications in full. You can even turn on the camera. A little bit of selfie action right there. And if you drag down from the top of that secondary screen, you can also access your media controls and other toggles. And even if the phone is hibernating, you can still just double tap on there and you can skip tracks, pause the music, whatever you want to do. The Motorola calls this secondary screen a clit display. That's clit, C-L-I, not clit. Definitely don't get that confused. It's a 2.7 inch panel, so nice and spacious and pretty crisp as well with its HD plus resolution, 800 by 573. So even teeny little text is perfectly legible. It's an AMOLED display as well, although the colors don't seem quite as poppy and those blacks don't seem quite as black as on the main display. But you can basically open up any app you want on this mini secondary display. You can choose exactly which apps appear in that list right there on the front screen. Of course, not all apps are well suited to the aspect ratio of this screen. So for instance, like some DZ, you can only see a teeny little bit of what is actually going on. And you can fully customize that clip display as well, or quick view display as it is termed inside of the settings. So first up, you can change that clock style, although the options don't seem quite as good as the Z Flip 4. You've got a few analog and digital efforts that you can choose between. Certainly not as diverse or as thrilling as Samsung's effort. And while you can't set a video as the background, you can choose from pretty much any photo on your smartphone, which in my case, mostly a bit of anime action. And you can also play with the panels that pop up when you swipe left and right across that secondary display as well. Not a huge number on offer, but as you can see there, you can get a bit of agenda action, some weather shenanigans, and you can actually rearrange them as well to suit your own personal preference. But if for whatever bizarre reason you are so inclined, you can actually play video on this secondary display. I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to because it's not exactly an immersive experience, but uh, there you go. It bloody works, so that's quite cool. You can always just unfurl the screen and then I was going to say continue the show on that main display, but it seems to have f***ed up. Now, certainly if you want to enjoy a more cinematic experience, that 6.7 inch interior display is the way forward. It's once again an AMOLED panel, this time with really sharp contrast really slap you in the face poppy colors as well. Nice wide viewing angles too, and it's pretty bright on the top brightness levels. Certainly bright enough to use outdoors, even when it's sunny. I do know because the sun did pop out for like three seconds earlier and I ran outside and could still see what was going on, hooray. You got a full HD plus resolution here, so it's pretty crisp despite the fact that it is a gargantuan panel. And finally, thank the baby Jesus, Motorola has done away with that ugly iPhone style mustache notch that plagued the previous two Motorola Razr smartphones. Now that interior camera is housed in a tiny little selfie orifice sort of cut out thingy up top and it barely intrudes at all when you do go full screen. And I've got to say as well, while that crease is definitely noticeable when you hold the Motorola Razr 2022 at a certain angle and the light catches it, as you can see there, it's not really noticeable at all when you are staring straight on at the screen, watching a movie or whatever. And it's certainly not too bad at all. And where you can feel the crease as well when you rub your thumb over it like so. It's not so much of a ridge like it was on that Z Flip 4. It just feels more like a little bump. If you jump on into the display settings, there's a lot of options to play around with here. You can completely tweak the color output. You can turn on the night light. Got the likes of flicker prevention. And as you can see there, you can mess around with the refresh rate as well. The refresh does actually climb as high as 144 hertz. But as you can see with this teeny bit of text here, that's only with compatible games. Otherwise, the screen does max out at 120 hertz and it will dynamically scale up and down depending on what you're up to. So that's the visuals, but what about the actual audio? Well, the Motorola Razr 2022 sports a stereo speaker setup with a crotch thrust and bit of Dolby Atmos action. A highly arousing bit of tech speak, but is it actually any good? The X30 is reasonably comfortable to clutch despite having quite flat edge and at least it's not a proper big old chunkster like the iPhones. Well, like many a smartphone with stereo speakers, unfortunately the earpiece speaker up here isn't half as powerful as the bottom mounted speakers. 
So don't exactly expect a balanced bit of audio. And because that bottom speaker is actually facing away from you as well, you get sort of weird echoey effect. It's not quite as full bodied as you'd hope, but on that top volume, it's certainly loud enough to enjoy a bit of video or whatever. Even if you're in a fairly noisy environment, like a kitchen busy whipping up a omelet or something. The only other issue is that that bottom speaker is fairly easy to muffle by accident if you are doing a bit of gaming, for instance, which is quite annoying, at which point you might want to slap on some headphones. No headphone jack action here, of course, you are either dongling it or Bluetoothing it. What's that? You want some more specs? Well, I'll give you some more specs. You've got Wi-Fi 6E and 5G support. And so far, when I've been connected to my Wi-Fi network or roaming out about there in the wild, that connection stayed strong and stable. You've also got a choice of 256 gigs or 512 gigs of storage space, so plenty of room for all of your random crap. No expandability via micro SD, unfortunately. There's only a single SIM slot on that tray as well. But the good news is that the Motorola Razr 2022 also supports eSIM as well as that single SIM. And when it comes to the performance, the Motorola Razr 2022 edition is a serious step up from previous Razrs, which had more mid-range chipsets packed in it. This one does not compromise. You've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, Qualcomm's Billy Big Bollocks Ultimate SoC right now. And that's backed here by either 8 or 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So it's not exactly a massive shocker that Genshin Impact runs absolutely fine, even on the highest graphic settings. I certainly found it a highly satisfying gaming experience. That display is nice and responsive. You don't have that stupid notch getting in the way anymore. And thankfully, because this is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, not the regular 8 Gen 1, I found that the Razer 2022 didn't heat up under duress either. The back end certainly got toasty, that's for sure, but I didn't see any kind of performance throttling, even when Genshin impacting for quite some time. And as I mentioned before, you've got that Mortal Game Time tool, which you can pull out at any point with a quick tap of that icon. You can also change that. So this menu is accessed with a swipe rather than a tap of an icon. Just makes it a bit neater. So now just swipe out like so and ta-da. And this has got lots of great features packed away in there. Quite a few, as you can see there. So you can block calls and notifications. When you're playing more demanding fair like Genshin Impact, you definitely want to poke your way into performance mode and stick it on the beefiest setting. Got some other cool, more unique features like acoustic lights, which can just help you out if you are playing something like Call of Duty or PUBG. You want to know which direction you're getting shot at. You can also tweak the screen sensitivity and stream directly to Twitch as well if your skills are seriously better than mine. Now, I did generally like the previous two Motorola Razr Reboot smartphones, but I couldn't wholeheartedly recommend them for people to actually spend money on and use as their full-time smartphone because of one reason. The battery life was frankly a barrel of arse biscuits. That's not really a massive shock because the previous version of the Motorola Razr rocked a mere 2,800 milliamp hour capacity battery, which is almost half-sized compared with some of the gargantuan smartphones you get these days. However, thankfully, that is another improvement that Motorola has made for this latest 2022 model. So what you got here now is a 3,500 milliamp hour capacity battery, a big step up, and only a mighty teeny tiny bit smaller than what you'll find packed inside of Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4. And incidentally, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 is powered by the same platform that powers the Motorola Razr 2022, that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So it wasn't exactly a massive shock to find that the battery life is about on par with Samsung's bendy blow. You'll get around five hours of screen on time, can just about squeeze that, depending on what you're up to. That's with sort of general mixed use. If you're gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact and you can see that battery drain faster than my slightly optimistical hopes of Sunderland being promoted back to the Premier League this season. And when you do want to recharge the Motorola Razr 2022, well, you've got that power adapter bundle in there. It's 30 watt turbo power charging. It's not exactly the nippiest around, but you won't be hanging around too long waiting for a full charge when the phone is fully drained. Unfortunately, no support for wireless charging, however. So let's finish up this highly arousing unboxing and hands-on review of the Motorola Razr 2022 with a squint at the camera tech. And up front, what we have is a 50 megapixel primary shooter with optical image stabilization, and that is backed by a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. However, when the phone is folded up like so, that 50 meg main sensor actually snaps 9.4 megapixel images while the ultra wide angle shoots at 9.7 megapixels. It's not until you unfurl it that you actually unlock the ability to shoot at that 50 megapixel resolution by selecting ultra res. 
But I do like that you can use the main camera to shoot these pixel bin images using that secondary screen as a kind of viewfinder. So you can clearly line yourself up. And you've got a small selection of modes you can play around with, including the likes of the portrait mode. You can shoot some video, slow motion, and time lapse, do the old spot color shenanigans. And then to snap a photo, all you need to do is tap. But of course, you don't want to tap. So your fingers in the way of the lens, which is kind of dumb. So let's tap up here instead. And yes, another award winning selfie extravaganza from myself. And of course, it's probably easier to take selfies holding it in this perspective rather than the dumbass way I was doing it. Now, I do like Motorola's camera UI. It does seem rather cluttered and action packed at first, but you soon get used to where everything is. You can drag down some more options like so. Nice and easy one handed use. And that 50 meg primary sensor can capture good looking pics day or night, even in quite ambient conditions and in low light conditions, helped along by a rather excellent night mode. Get nice sharp results, even if you're not going to that ultra res mode for the 50 megapixel resolution. Reasonably natural looking colors, not too put off by HDR situations and the like. And all of the usual camera modes are in here. Of course, the likes of the portrait mode where you can actually mess around with the aperture level. You've got a pro mode to play around with like the ISO level, the contrast level, the white balance, etc. And you can shoot raw images and lots of other bits going on, including the likes of that night vision, which I already mentioned. You can also scan documents. Nothing too shocking or surprising at all. And then back in the auto photo mode, you can swap between the 50 meg primary sensor and that 13 megapixel ultra wide angle, which is also used for your macro snaps. And if you're all about a bit of home movie action, you can swap to video and you can actually shoot it up to 8K resolution here on the Motorola Razr 2022. Here's some examples of some simple footage that I just snapped around the old homestead over the course of about sort of 24, 48 hours with the Motorola Razr 2022. Image stabilization is decent, no problems with the audio pickup either. And then last up in that main display, you do have a 32 megapixel selfie shooter stuck away up top there. And you might be wondering, well, what's even the point of that if you can basically use those main camera sensors for your selfie needs? Well, this could actually be pretty handy if, for instance, you want to set the Motorola Razr down and shoot a little video of yourself doing some crazy TikTok style dance shenanigans. Of course, you can always just prop the Motorola Razr 2022 up like so and then shoot video using those rear cameras instead. Although if you do this, as you can see there, you are shooting a typical landscape video. You're not getting that portrait TikTok style shenanigans on the go. And in this mode, it's definitely a lot better for Skyping as well. You can more clearly see what is going on. And that right there in a sexy wee nutshell is the fresh new Motorola Razr 2022. A formidable bendy smartphone, definitely strong competition for that Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 as well, powered by the same powerful 8 plus Gen 1 chipset. So you've got beefier performance, you've got an even bigger front facing display, you've got improved battery life as well. So yeah, well worth considering if you are in the market for a very compact, very lovable bendy blower. So that's what this bold northern nugget reckons anyway, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts at home. Are you tempted to grab yourself one? Motorola Razr 2022, it'd be great to hear your thoughts. Please do pork subscribe, ding that notifications bell. I'm off to sink a triple whiskey and then collapse because I'm freaking dead inside. But you have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week and that'll do. Cheers everyone, love you, bye.